Hey guys, welcome to another segment of the Let the Men Speak from the Shallow Hole in this Church. And today I would like to talk about the subject of pride. Now, I chose this because it's something that I've been recently really understanding what it means, what it deals with, and how destructive it can be for me personally. And it, I'm also realizing that it's, it's a struggle that most men really go through. Um, and when we're talking about pride here, like I'm specifically talking about the idea that we do not admit that we're not able to. To do something and we don't have the power to do something and to move forward here i'm gonna read a passage from second corinthians 12 verses 5 to 10 from the new living translation it reads that experience is worth boasting about but i'm not going to do it I will boast only about my weaknesses and i'm gonna pause here see to give some content paul context paul is talking about an experience that he had earlier and an experience with god that he had earlier and he's trying to say here that he doesn't want him talking about this experience to be about the fact that he had an experience but the fact that he had an experience with god so continuing on here verse six i if i wanted to boast i would be no fool in doing so because i would be telling the truth but I won't do it because I don't want anyone to give me credit beyond what they can see in my life or hear in my message. Even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God. So to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and to keep me from becoming proud. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in, in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer from Christ. For when I am weak, I am strong. Now, this passage is a, is a bit of a hard pill to swallow at least for me it is because it's basically saying that for god to get the glory i'm you know i'm just summarizing but for the god to get the glory i need to be in a bad situation that's a prideful way of thinking because right away if you think like that then you, you're thinking about yourself at least that's what i that's what i see it um Oftentimes we're in a situation like this because we're not able to admit to ourselves or we're not able to admit in general that we're not able to get ourselves out of the situation. We're not able to say the right words. We're not able to make the right decisions all the time. We don't have that power. And God sets things up in this way so that we are forced to turn to him. Paul said that three different times he begged the Lord to take away what he was going through, but he didn't do it because God didn't want. God knew rather that if he just took it away, God wouldn't. Paul wouldn't have learned that he needed to rely on God. Paul wouldn't have learned that he is incapable of 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 doing of saving himself you know and through this paul learns that everything that he goes through is an opportunity for god to flex his power you know to show that he is capable of taking you out of it he's capable of protecting he's capable of doing all the, all the things that he has promised that he will do for us and us being in those weak points us being in those in those weak states and really amplifies his his greatness because when people look at you and they see that you are weak and they see your human the, the limits of your human capabilities but you're still able but you're still progressing you're still being blessed you're still you're still rising above certain situations then they're seeing that 
it's not you doing it, but the power in you that 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 you've been given. It really sh it it really shows to the the people around you that that God is the reason why you are succeeding. So for me, it was hard to understand or hard to accept that I needed to let go of the idea that I can do things because I actually can't, you know, I would struggle so hard to be able to do things and to fix things or, you know, go as far as not allowing other people to help me because I feel like I should be able to do it when all I need to do is ask for help. All we need to do is turn our eyes towards the Lord, the, the Lord and say, Lord, I need your help. So my word of encouragement is to say that when you're in a situation and you get, you know, you, you, you oftentimes know when you're spinning your wheels in mud and you're starting to refuse options, you're starting to, to refuse praying or you're starting to refuse asking for help because you feel like you can do it. It's, it's that's time when you need to say, I need to put myself aside and ask for help i need to put myself inside and and um and get into prayer um that's something that i have learned and pride it helps no one it doesn't help myself it doesn't help the person that you're trying to help because nothing gets done that's what i think that's what i've seen but it also does not glorify god because if we could do everything on our own, then why would we need God? And God's trying to show us that we can't do everything on our own and that he is needed. So, um, that's my word of encouragement. I hope everyone has a, has a great uh, rest of the 2020. I know 2020 is crazy, but I'm praying that the Lord is with everyone, each and every one of you. God bless.